Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Cynical, and welcome back to a, another episode of Sea Salt Snippets. Today, for you guys, we've got some sub-icy topics to talk about, so without further ado, let's just dive straight into it. And as a side note, I just gotta say, speaking those words feel so good. Obviously, we're back. It feels a little bit foreign, just because, you know, it's been about a month, but it feels really good regardless. Hopefully, you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day. Without further ado, Let's get into it. So for today's first news topic, I thought we'd talk a little bit more about Critical Mode because at this point it seems to be that this is going to be the first piece of additional content for Kingdom Hearts 3 that we are going to receive. And from the sounds of it, uh, Critical Mode is not too far away. I'm sure at this point, uh, pretty much everyone's finished Cage 3 itching for more, itching for more additional content, giving us a reason to jump back into the experience and to play it all over again. And from the sounds of things, Critical Mode 4KH3 is going to be really, really cool. So first of all, I thought I'd bring up an interview piece from the end of February where Tetsuya Nomura actually sits down with Dengeki online and actually explains why Critical Mode wasn't in the base game of KH3. Mentioned right here, initially Critical Mode wasn't in the original versions of the games, but a mode added to the Final Mix versions. That's why it'll be sent out in downloadable form in the future. It won't just be a hard mode, but as it's critical mode, we're tweaking so more enjoyment can be discovered. So Tetsunomura's reasoning behind critical mode not being in Kingdom Hearts 3 initially is actually quite interesting. He's pretty much saying that because originally back in the day, Kingdom Hearts only had critical mode via the addition of the Final Mix version of that game. So for instance, Kingdom Hearts 2 didn't originally release with critical mode until the Final Mix counterpart released. That was the very first Kingdom Hearts game to introduce a fourth difficulty setting, as fans for quite some time had wanted a harder difficulty mode. The same also ended up happening with Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, it too got a Final Mix edition, and through that, Critical Mode was a playable difficulty. Kingdom Hearts Recoded had Critical Mode straight away from the get-go, as well as Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. However, the only thing with Dream Drop Distance is you actually had to beat the game first, and then Critical Mode would be unlocked. And I guess Critical Mode has become a staple point difficulty where at this point people expect that mode to be in a Kingdom Hearts game as soon as it releases. So yeah, the reasoning is kind of funky. He's pretty much saying that because Critical Mode was additional content in a way through Final Mix, it should also be additional content for KH3. However though, I guess it is sort of understandable because it has actually been made clear that Critical Mode is going to be slightly different in Kingdom Hearts 3, as Square have actually confirmed that they're not just adjusting damage values and other simple things like reduced health and all of the other sort of normal to be expected critical mode adjustments. It seems to be that they're actually turning critical mode for Kingdom Hearts 3 into somewhat of a new experience for the game. At least that's what it's sounding like. Fingers crossed it's actually going to be something like this. Recently at GDC, Game Informer actually sat down with Tai Yasue and they actually got talking about the upcoming critical mode for Kingdom Hearts 3, where Tai actually goes into a little bit of information behind how this critical mode is sort of going to be different. He's quite subtle about it, but it's sounding cool. And he also mentions that the mode is coming extremely soon. So this is what Game Informer said. Those who are pinning for more difficulty in Kingdom Hearts 3 will soon get their wish. Co-director Tai Yasue was on hand at this year's GDC, confirming Critical Mode is coming very soon and will be more than enemies just having a value change. Yasue said it's more technical and offensive and more for those who are good at action games and timing attacks. He said the skill required will change the way you play the game. So if there are like these extra layers added to this newfound Kingdom Hearts 3 Critical Mode, then I guess I understand as to why they didn't initially add it into the game from the get-go. I'm intrigued to know more about his emphasis on timing attacks. As we know, we can actually now combo cancel in Kingdom Hearts 3, and this is actually one of the better new additions to the combat of the game. Seeing as there has been a lot of criticism on Kingdom Hearts 3's uh, new combat system, obviously a lot of comparisons between KH3 and previous titles, and whilst I agree with actually quite a lot of the criticism, but I gotta say that combo cancelling is definitely one of the best newfound features for KH3. Please keep this going 
falling. So I'm wondering if maybe combo cancelling might become a bigger focus and that, yeah, enemies are slightly more aggressive, meaning that you will actually have to dodge in and out of attacks. I'm not saying that Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to turn into, you know, Dark Souls. But with them saying more technical and defensive and timing attacks, it might mean that we have to be a little bit more strategic when actually going into fights. I also hope that they do things like reducing the amount of uh, situation commands that can be stacked at once. I would honestly be fine with only having two at a time. Grand Magic consuming MP would mean that it wouldn't be so spammable, and lots of other tweaks that I'm sure they are doing. Although Tayasaway did mention that Critical Mode is coming very soon, so uh, I'm saying that probably in the next month or two, we will see this mode be available, and no doubt this is going to be the very first piece of free DLC lined up for the game. As we know, Square have confirmed that there are going to be various pieces of free DLC, as well as one paid DLC for KH3. So I'd say no doubt at E3 this year, Square will most likely have a presence and a feature on Kingdom Hearts 3 in the DLC lineup to show off the major paid story DLC for the game, as well as the other various pieces of free DLC. Uh, but I'd like to think that Critical Mode will end up releasing before E3 comes around. Next up for today, Kingdom Hearts 3 recently got a feature at GDC, the Game Developers Conference, during the Unreal presentation. This presentation was allowing developers who had actually used the Unreal Engine 4 to step forward and talk about the different development techniques that they used to develop their games using the Unreal Engine 4. Well yeah, Ty Yasuei was actually involved in this and he was talking about Kingdom Hearts 3 and exactly how they use the Unreal Engine 4 to bring Kingdom Hearts 3 together. There's actually some interesting stuff in here, like the different techniques they use to bring together the realistic looking water effects in the Pirates of the Caribbean world, the techniques they used for Rapunzel's hair, they talk about this really cool little uh, testing room that they used for stuff like jump height, maneuverability, and combat. They also go quite in depth about their special effects and how they brought all of those together. And although I know that a lot of people were expecting Tai Yasuei to step forward and to maybe announce or talk about something to do with the DLC side of things for Kingdom Hearts 3 during this panel, there was no new information that was actually revealed here. It was just simply a sort of focus on how exactly Unreal Engine 4 was used to bring together Kingdom Hearts 3. If you guys want to check out the full video of the presentation, it goes for about five minutes, not too long, but there is definitely some interesting stuff to be seen in this. I'm going to leave the link in the description down below. And last off for today, we have quite the interesting topic to wrap this video up with. So sometime soon, Square Enix are going to be applying an update to Kingdom Hearts 3, specifically and only the Japanese version that will go ahead and remove all of the current Olaf lines in the game, obviously Olaf from the Frozen world, and they're going to be replaced with a brand new voice actor. Now, most likely the lines will, you know, be all the same, but this is due to the fact that the Japanese voice actor for Olaf, Per Taki, earlier this month was actually involved in a drug bust and has been caught using cocaine. Now, obviously when you're involved in any sort of illegal drug situation, I mean, that's bad, but because, hey kids, it's illegal drugs, you shouldn't be doing them. But that is the fastest way to ruin and utterly burn your contract with that of Disney. So obviously in Pierre's case, he has been taken off the role of voicing Olaf for the Japanese audience and is soon going to be replaced with a completely new voice actor. I'm hoping though for the sake of the Japanese audience, the new Olaf will live up to that of, you know, the previous Olaf voice actor, Pierre Taki. I don't think really a situation like this is actually actually ever happened where a video game developer has actually had to go ahead and completely remove voice lines due to that voice actor being involved in an illegal situation. I don't know, maybe this has happened before, but it just means more work for both Square and Disney to get a new voice actor on board to then re-record all of those lines. The other interesting thing about the situation is it's actually caused Disney to halt all production of Frozen Blu-rays and DVDs to the Japanese market, which essentially means that you can't buy Frozen in Japan. Whether or not there might be an updated Japanese Japanese version of Frozen, where they'll also use the new Olaf Japanese voice actor and update the movie lines and then re-release it, who exactly knows. But that is pretty much it for today's episode of Sea Salt Snippets, guys. Uh, once again, thank you dudes so much for being patient with me uh, during this long, long absence. Of course, if you guys did see yesterday's video, that's pretty much announcing the fact that yes, I am back. We're back into the swing of content. Hopefully you dudes are having an absolutely fantastic day. I'm Cynical, and until next time, I'll catch you guys later.
Peace. Hit him on the page, you'll be coming through stain. Go dead my mouth when you suckers be bluffing. Milk crate, gaming up your bitch though. Catch me in the back playing Super Nintendo.